Coming up today on Houston Life, get a lesson in table tennis by a local 10-year-old phenom who will be part of the 2021 World Table Tennis Championships. And have you ever wondered what's inside your mattress? From the springs to foam, we're taking you inside a local factory where every mattress is built from the ground up. And we're taking you behind the scenes of the Urban Nutcracker, featuring more than 100 dancers, actors, and musicians from all across the city. And lace up your shoes and get ready for the 29th annual Baker Ripley Turkey Trot. We are live with all the info. Lauren's having a ton of fun. Why not join in? Get in on all the action for this Thanksgiving Day tradition. All that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala, still dealing with the back issue, but the good news is it's muscular. So it, that is the best case scenario after starting some physical therapy yesterday. Which means no slipped disc, right? No slipped disc. No bulging no. discs. No. So we just have to do a little PT and, you know, in a couple weeks, Good as new. Hopefully by Monday I'll be able to sit on the stool. You're still standing, and that's still a good standing. thing. Right before the show started, Courtney said, you know, uh, aren't you going to stand up in solidarity? <laughs> Here's the problem. I stand up and, like, part of my head disappears. So I know. I'm going to sit down uh, for framing and because I'm lazy. A lot of people always say, gosh, you look so much taller on TV. Not this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Joe Sam is in studio today. And yesterday, if you tuned into Houston Life, you saw he was able to adopt a brand new furry member of his family. That's Snoopy right there. So sweet. I knew it was going to be Snoopy. I mean, uh, they they look like they've known each other for a long time, already giving each other lip kisses. How about that? So uh, Joe will uh, meet up with us later today on the show and talk about how it's going. But in the meantime, check out clicktohouston.com. If you have been considering oh. adopting a pet, check this out. So this animal shelter in Fort Bend County, it's actually out in Rosenberg. They have 180 animals. Wow. So 152 dogs, 28 cats, mm. and they need so much help. I guess because more and more people are spending time away from home, a lot of these shelters are seeing more pet surrenders, which is so tragically heartbreaking, but you know, it's better to bring it to a shelter than, you know, just let it out on the streets, which happens as well. Horrible. So if you can adopt, if you can foster, any way you can help out, you adopt these pets, they're all ready to go. They're immunized, right. they are microchipped, spayed or neutered, so they are good to go. If you've been considering adopting a pet, now is the, a great time to do it. Absolutely, get the whole family involved, and when you know, you know, and I think what's so great is a lot of these rescue animals, when they come home, they know. They know they've been chosen. They know that they have been saved, and it's like they, they have a little bit spring, different spring in their step. I think so, too. I think so, too. They're very, very smart. So we chat a lot about adults behaving badly, right, and bad passenger behavior. And oh, yeah. lately, uh, we've all, I think, been on the road just a little bit more. I was asking a flight attendant recently, you know what, when are we going to be able to have a drink on the plane again? You know, like maybe a vodka soda or two, right? And she leaned down and she whispered and she said, when people learn to stop acting a fool. So once people can start behaving a little more, you know, professionally on planes. So here's the thing. We've talked about these flight issues yeah. before. So the flight attendants union and the FAA, like they're all working together, right? And if you are one of those people on a plane where you're punching a flight attendant, you refuse to wear your mask, you, you're you not only gonna get in trouble, I mean, potentially arrested when that plane lands or potentially federal pulled off. Federal charge, by the but way. But yeah, it's a federal charge. You could end up with fines. So don't even go there, right? They're reporting 5,000 cases of disruptive passenger behavior since the beginning of this year. Here's the thing, Courtney, that is more than the last 30 years of air travel wow. combined. That's crazy. Combined, and the year's not even over. Yeah, well, you know what little, here's a little known fact. I never, ever drink alcohol on a plane. Don't do it. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. I know. Why not? I don't know, I don't know if it's because, I just, I don't, you're afraid you're going to act out. No, it's someone. not that at all. It's not that at all. It's, you know, my kids are with me or maybe I just, I, I don't, I don't need it. It's like, I don't, I'm not, I never get on the plane in order. I'm sure I have once or twice, 
Never done it. Really? No. See, I usually do it just to start drowning out the, all the conversations around me that I really don't care to hear for. Oh, to I put hear, my headphones on and literally, I mean, I could fall asleep standing up. So I sit down in that seat on the airplane. Mm. And That's I'm out. impressive. Well, listen, before we move on, flight attendants say this. If you are on a plane, because you know you see these crazy videos of adults acting just really out of control. Yes. Screaming, refusing to wear their masks. I mean, we all know the rules, right? If you can't wear the mask, don't get on the plane. So they say if you find yourself in a situation where someone is freaking out near you, the last thing you want to do is like hit your flight attendant call button because then you're involved, right? They recommend, these flight attendants recommend, you just slip out of your seat, go to the back, like you're going to use the restroom, notify a flight attendant that way, okay, and then so let them sort discreet. of take care of it. Yeah. That's a There's a whole system in place now. I mean, people who behave badly could end up on a no-fly, certainly being banned from one specific yeah. airline that that happens on, but maybe on others as well. We'll see. I mean, it, that's the thing. There's not a lot of space to, you know, sneak away from on the aircraft. True. You know, so I like that little stealth move, just kind of get up and make yourself known in other locations. Yes. Sit on someone's lap. I don't know. Um, okay, tis the you season. You won't drink some wine, but you'll sit on someone else's <laughs> lap. Okay. I'm just kidding. No, I don't. It, I know it's a weird thing. I just realized that while you were talking about that story. So, of course, Thanksgiving holiday, everybody's getting their meal. You know, you go to the grocery store, packed, packed, packed. My favorite story from every Thanksgiving is the Butterball <gasps> Turkey Talk Line. Oh, this is like the helpline, yes, right? Yes, the helpline. But very specific, this was only about cooking turkeys. This is not a therapy session. But oh, by the way, well. they are celebrating 40 years with the Turkey Butterball Helpline. Have you ever called it? What? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Might have, just to see if anybody answered. You can also text. You can text this year. And with any kind of question like, hey, okay. I forgot to thaw my turkey. It's Tuesday. What do I do? Yes. Yeah, so here's the number one rated question. Derek, how do I thaw a turkey? The second oh. most commonly asked question is how to prevent a dry turkey. Don't my eat it in the first place, maybe? <laughs> my it, the, the beginning of that one was check the expiration date. If you've been holding on that for a year, it's going to be dry. I'm just saying. Dry and tough. Yeah, real yeah. dry and tough. My favorite question on the list of top 10 was, what are giblets? Oh. Like some, you could just look that up or ask Google. Yeah, ask, ask the but Google. But listen, those people are standing by, again, not a therapy session. This is all about cooking your turkey. The giblets are all of like the internal organs, right? Yeah, the innards. The innards in a sack. Yeah, yeah up in Idaho, there are all of these uh, wild turkeys. And as the sun goes down, you start hearing them gobble, gobble. It's like a chorus of turkeys. It's really... It's so no do they not... What does that mean? They don't... They're not available to... I don't know. What is it? <laughs> what is a... <laughs> I can't... <laughs> So that's different than the kind of turkey we eat, or Does no? Anyone else know what's going on? <laughs> I know it says chicken of the sea, but is it chicken or is it tuna? It's a different, I mean, there it's are different, different type types of turkey. Of turkey. <laughs> <laughs> They're wild. I don't know. I don't go to Idaho very often. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry listen. I brought it up. What else do you have? Maybe I should start drinking on an airplane. <laughs> okay, listen, our KPRC2 Insider Holiday Bracket is live right now. Ooh. This is tackling which Thanksgiving side is the best. Y'all, I cannot believe I just asked that question live on the air. <laughs> KPRC2 Insiders can vote on their favorite Thanksgiving side. Hurry and put your vote in. By the way, if you're not an insider, this is the easiest way to do it. I don't know why, what you're waiting for here, okay? Visit clicktohouston.com slash insider, and this is how you can take part of the bracket. And this one, bracket round one, closes at 6 p.m. I think this is going to be a very heated, heated discussion, right? In, I know. Heated in a friendly way, right? Friendly. Which side would you pick? Um, as far as like, oh, which side? I mean, uh, ooh, I love sweet potato <laughs> and I love stuffing. <laughs> I can't pick one. <laughs> the visuals. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh. Um, <laughs> I've been a lot of sweet pain. potatoes. I love the sweet potato casserole, though, with marshmallows on top. Yes, and some pecans. See, I love Slightly marshmallows. Toasted. I love sweet potatoes. I love pecans. You don't like it all together. I don't like it all together. What's just like pineapple you? and pizza, I don't want them together. Oh, never. That should never happen. I just want them separately. Yeah, that should never happen. Yeah, I think I'm a stuffing guy. Do you know the difference between what is it, stuffing and dressing? Why? Do, why are there two words for one? 
<gasps> oh, one Sorry is inside the, the bird, but I thought for health reasons you're not supposed to stuff it anymore. Yeah, I don't think do so. I, I think a lot of people advise against putting anything inside the bird. I still that want you to call consume. it stuffing, though. I just, yeah. <laughs> We're having a whole conversation with Heather in our ears right now. I know. You call it stuffing, but it's still... No, she calls it dressing. I dressing, call it stuffing. Dressing, stuffing. Okay. Well, I don't know. You can call the butterball turkey line if you're wondering about what to put inside the bird. Yeah, you can ask that question. But again, nothing else. Don't ask about your date to Thanksgiving. Still to come. I bet people do that all the time. I bet they do. I wish I could be part of that phone line just for like 10 minutes. After a Thanksgiving feast, we all need what? A good nap. Oh, yeah. Right? It goes hand in hand. But you might be surprised to learn that the turkey's not all to blame for the sleepiness we're going to explain coming up. All right. But first, why don't we check back in with Lauren Kelly, who has the details on a Houston Thanksgiving tradition. Lauren, this is great news. It's returning this year in person. We are so excited about that and forget the nap before you even get to the table. The 2021 Baker Ripley Turkey Trot is back and I've got all the details on how you can be going home with a finishing medal at this week's event coming up in the Galleria area on Thursday. That is when Houston life returns. Uh, uh oh, that, that's not going to fit. <laughs> Okay, so many of us for years, we've been hearing about turkey and tryptophan. Yes, right? makes you sleepy, Which right? makes you sleepy. Here's the thing. Prepare to have your minds blown. They say that turkey doesn't have any more tryptophan than other types of meat. And even things like cheddar cheese have more tryptophan. What? That make you tired. But here's the thing. High fat foods, so that is what makes you sleepy because it's harder for your body to process. Right. So your body may need a little Thanksgiving snooze to burn off all of those fattening calories you've d just digested. So turkey is unfairly blamed and has been for decades. Well, and I do think too, I mean, you know, a typical holiday, I tend to just overeat anyway because it's just, it's there and it's a big meal. So I feel like if I'm eating more than I normally would at a meal, that makes me sleepy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, with that heavy belly, how do you even move around? You, you gotta can't. sleep it off. You gotta roll off. I get it, yeah, I get exactly. it. exactly. Let's bring in Joe Sam with our question of the day. Joe, a lot of these comments, I have to tell you, I've been LOLing. Oh it's yeah. It's been so funny. <laughs> They've been sending the man Courtney. You know what, that's tradition. You have to eat a lot and then you take a good nap after. That's what everybody should do. You wanna hear from you guys. This is the question, ruin Thanksgiving in four words. This is really good, really funny. I hate people that ruin Thanksgiving. Jeffy writes in, let's talk about politics. That's a way to get the conversation started and to end Thanksgiving for sure. Susie writes in, does this look raw? Awesome. <laughs> Nobody's eating after that. Amanda writes in, the dogs ate everything, knowing that's probably me blaming the dogs, Amanda. And Nancy, she writes in, what? I hated your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, John. Look, your ex-husband called. Oh, Ooh, man. that starts up some fire. I love all of these comments in, and everyone continues to go in and send those in. Head over to our Houston Life Facebook page. We want to keep this conversation going, and we'll share those comments a little later on in the show. Anybody ruin Thanksgiving for you guys with four words? No. no right? I, I mean, we're usually, I mean, it's usually pretty good. I just pretty always cool. think of the food fight. You know. Mm. Well, does this look raw? I think that's a good one because everyone is concerned about something being undercooked or overcooked. Right. The, I mean, the last thing you want is food poisoning. You know, they say oh. the busiest day of the year for plumbers is the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> really? Yes. That's why I leave everyone out of the bathroom. Look, and out of the kitchen too. We well, there you go. Plates to them. Look, pick up and go on back home. That That's is what we're funny. doing this year. A lot okay, of well, pipes. we also have to catch up with you and Snoopy. Oh, yeah. Um, so you actually pick up Snoopy tonight, right? Yes. So we go back and get him. He had to do his vet visit today, okay. and then we have to bring him back on home. I went to PetSmart and I just did a full haul of everything. Oh, so, so we got sweet. the bed, we got the leash, we got some pet food, we got some toys in there, the little squeaky toys. So I, I love it. I can't wait to get started. Now, I did have to try and change the name up. I know everybody loved the name Snoopy, but he doesn't respond to Snoopy. Right. So what it's, you, it's a shelter said. name. It is a shelter yes. name. So he was brought to the shelter on Halloween 
and I, it's my favorite holiday. So we're going to either name them ghost or spirit. So that's the other poll question that's oh, on Facebook right now. Joe, Interesting. I love it. They uh, say two syllable names are the best for dogs oh. because they it's they're less confused by that. Wow, that's great. And just in time for Thanksgiving. Exactly. Help me out. He's going to be introduced to the families who has the new son. That's I why I wear my little hat today. I feel like a dad. Right. <laughs> and I love the Halloween connection. It was a match made in heaven. Match made in heaven. Absolutely. Can't wait to check on you. I did today. Just wanted to know how the first night was. I know, so. right? Hopefully it goes well. I think it he's will. a chill dog. So it will. We'll sleep, we'll cuddle up and watch some scary Just movies. like a newborn. You're up every three hours. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, we'll see you in a little bit. Absolutely. Congratulations, by the way. The Houston Turkey Trot, you know, is an annual event that supports the mission of Baker Ripley, who has served our community, I can't believe this, more than 100 years. Yeah, they are legendary here in H-Town. And for the last 28 years, the race has been a family Thanksgiving Day tradition here in Houston. Lauren Kelly is live with all the details on how we can all be part of the fun. Lauren, it looked like uh, that metal was having some issues fitting over the turkey's beak, huh? You know, the turkey's probably not going to make it to get a medal on Thanksgiving Day, but sh don't anybody tell him that. This is a Houston tradition that I am so proud to be a part of. I have run this race before, and on Thanksgiving Day, there's really no better way to wake up, run a race, and then just be able to excuse yourself and eat whatever you want later on in the day. So that's why I'm so excited to talk to you. This is Frederick Goodall. You are the Assistant Director of Communication for Baker Ripley. Now, why do you think that the turkey trot right here in Houston is so important to the community. So it's an amazing race that's happened for 29 years. So many people spend their Thanksgiving Day with us and we are so appreciative of that. Uh, but mostly they're here to support Baker Ripley and all the work that we do in this community. So where does all the fundraising go to support? So Baker Ripley, we do what we need to in the community. For example, when COVID hit, we had to pivot. So we started having weekly food fairs. We started partnering with the city and the county to uh, distribute rent relief for people who are about to get evicted. We're currently working with the uh, with Harris County to help people get that tax credit that's going to lift so many people out of poverty. So we, we do job training so people can get a better job. So many people are working two and three jobs. They still live in poverty. We want to help them to get a living wage job. So we're doing what we can to create possibilities. And when you talk about the getting in the Thanksgiving holiday spirit, this is absolutely the best way to start the day. Now, where can people go? We, we really want them to to sign up before the race because it's kind of not as fun right. if you get there on the race day. Look, uh, Sassy, the turkey over there is showing us where can we go? Where can I send viewers to register? You can go to HoustonTurkeyTrot.org and you can register for the 5K race, the 10K race, and the kids race. Okay, so if you're really feeling up to it and you're going to eat all that pie and dessert later, do the 10K, 5K if you're just getting into it and the kids can do the 1K. It's going to be right over here in this beautiful gallery area. Frederick, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having us. All right, when we come back, we've got more with someone who's run the race every single year every 28th year he is here we'll talk to him a little bit later on and and still sassy the turkey doesn't know that thanksgiving is probably not going to be his favorite holiday but Derek and courtney for oh. now sending it back to you guys oh, in the studio sassy sassy Look is at adorable sassy's... is it weird i have a little crush no he's cute oh just want to give him a little hug Thanks, all right lauren. lauren we'll see you in just a bit when we come back tis the season to start getting a better night's sleep we're going to take you inside the local factory where quality inexpensive mattresses are built from the ground up and and meet the local table tennis phenom who at just 10 years old has impressed everyone with this. This is right outside our wow. studio. Her ping pong <laughs> skills. She's 10. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Good luck with this, Derek. Houston <laughs> Life will be right back. A mattress is not a one-size-fits-all purchase, and our friends over at Texas Mattress Makers are the experts when it comes to helping you find the right mattress for your sleep style and body type. The owner, Yuval Michler, opened his factory doors for us and took us behind the scenes to see how their mattresses are made to order. I love being back here in this working factory. You've got an army of people back here cranking out these mattresses. How many mattresses are you producing every single day on average? On average, 350 to 400 pieces a day. And what we do is very unique. And the reason is, is everything that you will see here, all the machines, all the equipment, all the raw materials, you'll see at any mattress factory. The uniqueness about us is, that we manufacture what you need 
not what we want to manufacture and then do whatever it is that we need to do to sell it, right? Essentially, your mattresses are made to order. That is exactly right. So I come in and I find a mattress that I think works for me in your showroom, and then in about a week's time, your team here, they have custom made that mattress specifically for me. Exactly. When you come here, you're going to get what you need, period. That's the most important thing for me. You'd be shocked at the difference between sleeping well on a bed that fits you, that was made to fit you, instead of just going, let's spend the least amount of money, the least amount of time, it's not important. It is very important. There's that old saying, oh, that person must have slept on the wrong side of the bed, or wow, I'm sorry I'm having a bad day, I slept on the wrong side of the bed. Yep. That's just code for, I didn't sleep well. That's exactly right. But you can sleep well, and that's the message that we try to drive home every time we come visit you. You can sleep well, and you're gonna pay less. You're gonna save money because you're manufacturing it here, you're putting it over there, and from there, it goes directly to your home. It truly is factory direct because the moment a mattress is finished here, it's bagged up, it goes immediately onto a truck. Next stop, your house. That's right. Customers are essentially paying less because there is no middleman they're paying. That is exactly right. You will never buy anything less for less dollars than you would at Texas Mattress Makers. I know because I am a happy customer. I've told you this many times before. Anytime we have guests at the house and they sleep in the guest room, they sleep on the Amsterdam. I remember that name of that mattress. It was mm -hmm. under 400 bucks. And our guests always say it's the best night's sleep. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You're welcome. We have components here that you cannot find anywhere else. And I can see some of them right here That is exact, us. That is exactly right. You see the color of the different foams, the gray and the white? Mm -hmm. Different of, densities? Different densities. Mm -hmm. Why? Wondering. Because some people, when they sit on the side of the bed, want to feel firmness. Some want to feel, feel a little cushiness, and so on and so forth. We take all the things into account. We're not going to sell you the frou-frou. We're going to sell you the quality and the components and the longevity. We're going to tell you the truth. It's not a gimmick. A lot of people have seen the images of these shipping containers that are just sort of sitting out there. Supply chain issues, everyone's talking about them. Here in the factory, and this is a great opportunity to actually see your mattresses being built, you have enough raw materials, and these are locally sourced materials, so you're supporting other businesses by getting their materials, and that's how you've been able to continue with your mattress production. When I saw last year that things are going to get worse, then I started buying more and more material. Some materials that we need, we have over a year's supply in our warehouses. I love being back here in the factory. Not only is your staff just incredibly nice and friendly, but it's really cool to see how these mattresses come together. These are the best people in the world. I wouldn't trade working with these folks in any other job, any place else. Good people and a great product. Right now you can find Black Friday deals at Texas Mattress Makers. Save up to 35% off plus free delivery on select mattresses. You can learn more by visiting one of their five showrooms or shop online at texasmattressmakers.com. You can also call 713-341-6252. Now let's send things over to Joe who has a pretty cool holiday tradition we can all add to our list. Hey Joe. Yeah, pretty exciting production here, Derek. Still to come, a unique and local twist on a traditional classic. I'm giving you a look at the Houston Urban Nutcracker before it hits the stage next week. And of course, we'll get a check of what's coming up for the news at four, including holiday travel and what you can expect at the airport if you're flying out of town tomorrow. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. It's Courtney and Derek back with you on this Tuesday at 3.30. Yeah, we were just laughing during commercial break. Some of your comments. These are the best. Question of the day. We asked you to ruin Thanksgiving <laughs> in only four words. That's all it takes, I guess, right? Ben writes in, no alcohol this year. Congratulations, Ben. You, you know have won the award. I'll be in Utah, so we won't be drinking. No, you won't. Michaela writes in, yes, pants are mandatory. What? <laughs> Darla writes in, the cops are here. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a Sounds good like one. A fun Thanksgiving to me. Colin, uh, this one was funny. <laughs> I need the backstory on this one. We cook grandma's wig. <laughs> yeah, so we don't know if these comments are based on past experience, reality, or if it's just fiction. Rex writes in, who are you again? I know when you sit down to the table and you are. You know what? <laughs> Strangers can be Thanksgiving table mates as well. Exactly. These are all great comments. Join the conversation on our Facebook page. There is a lot of them. I kind of got lost in the rabbit hole there, but they are funny. If you need a good laugh, scroll the Facebook page for those comments. We're going to check in now with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at the top of the hour. And something tells me you guys might have a way to ruin Thanksgiving in four words. Anybody? Uh, Anybody? How about this? The stuffing is dry. Oh, oh. that the would not be good. turkey is frozen. <laughs> yeah. Forgot to turn the oven on. I think that's more than four words. <laughs> Mine was, no, it's five words. No, you can't be excused. Oh, like when you want to get up from the table and yeah. it's like, sit oh. down. You're yes. here for the family. You're nice. staying. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> There's gonna be there will be a few people in that situation just just <laughs> grin and bear it get through it the best you can. It's, yes. toge it's togetherness. <laughs> it's yeah. all about family. Yeah. It's all about love, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, always a good time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It, it's really nice out there today, Frank. Yes. It, oh, it's gorgeous. It's yes. Beautiful. Oh, and yes. Wednesday's going to be a pretty nice day. Of course, it is Thursday that is going to be a bit of a mess, and I'll get to that. You can see it's gorgeous out there now. Temperatures right around 70, 69, 70, 71 in Sugarland, 70 down on the island. No issues. Look at these pops. This is Stella and Spencer. I know. They're waiting for a little turkey a little scratch. scratch. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's going to be a nice evening right there in the 60s, 63 by 7. A bit of a southeast wind. That high that was right over us yesterday has moved off toward Nashville. Here's the front. Doesn't look like it's doing much now, but give it time. It's going to meet this warm air coming in from the Gulf. So timing this out, you can see across the state, Wednesday's a pretty good travel day, but Thursday, there's 3 a.m. in Dallas as the front starts to move in. Some showers ahead of the front. You can see the line right there. That's 8, 8.30 off to the northwest. We get to straight up noon. It's right through the Houston area. By the time we get to 5 o'clock, it's on the coast. So, as we've been saying, it's a mid-morning to a late afternoon event across the region, and then it's fairly quiet into Thanksgiving evening. But there, the rain is the threat. One to two inches. We'll talk more about the amounts coming up. All, and if we get it too fast, that could cause some flooding. I've got that as a medium threat, but it's there. And then the wind is going to come with the front as it moves through. As far as hail and tornadoes, not expecting much in that department. So this really isn't a severe weather event, but it is a wet one, and it is Thursday, that's for sure. Well, on a scale of one to four, low being the lowest, we are in that category for a flood risk. So coming up at four, I'll really tighten up that timeline for you. I'm going to show you just Thursday, hour by hour. So that's at four o'clock, the rainfall amounts that I'm expecting, and then the rest of the holiday weekend, because it is a long weekend. It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, Frank, we'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you. And here's a look at some of the other stories we're following for our newscast at four o'clock today. A new study is suggesting a drug typically used for treating alcoholism may fight severe COVID. A look at how this discovery was made and what it could mean when it comes to treating the virus. Plus, is it false advertising or bad customer service? Customers are not happy about Amazon Prime's promised two-day delivery that isn't always happening in two days. Investigator Amy Davis looks into what customers can do about it. And if you're heading out of town for the holiday, you're going to get ready for a mess out at Bush Airport from construction to garage closures, what you need to know to navigate the chaos and make sure that you make it to your plane on time. So we have these stories and much more coming up today at four o'clock, you guys. Yeah, it sounds like the name of the game this year is extra time. Yes, right? yes. Yep. and yes. along with your luggage, pack your patience. Go yeah, early. For sure. All right, guys, we'll see you at four o'clock. Turning now to the Nutcracker. It is a holiday tradition for many, and now there's a brand new twist on this classic. It's the Urban Nutcracker at Stafford Center, and Joe Sam is taking us behind the scenes. Hi, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, Houston's Urban Nutcracker is exploring the proud cultural heritage of the city through dance, music, and narration that will put you right in the holiday spirit while spotlighting Houston neighborhoods. I caught up with its creative director and Mel Lee to see why this is a show you don't want to miss. The Urban Nutcracker is a, um, it's kind of a twist on the traditional classic, but Houston's Urban Nutcracker is very different. So in the traditional Nutcracker, the Nutcracker Prince and Claire travel through the land of sweets, but here they travel through Houston neighborhoods. 
I also get to basically not just do ballet, but also play off of the other styles and the other studios that what they're bringing to the show. Those other styles contain elements of jazz, hip hop, tap, modern, and even some swing dancing to showcase the wide spectrum of Houston's dance scene. This city is full of so much uh, diverse talent and so much cultural diversity. To see all of these different dance groups and dance companies come together to show their culture and uh, to be represented on stage, that's really the primary purpose. And to have it all come together, uh, you know, on one stage for especially the young people to see, it just feels celebratory. Performers are celebrating the fact that they are back on stage. I haven't been able to perform in actual theater because of COVID protocol and restrictions of gatherings. So since this is the first uh, actual stage I get to be on, like since that time, I'm actually really excited to just really perform and just, you know, uh, just enjoy the Nutcracker like like everyone else. We got to go behind the scenes during their weekend rehearsal to see just how much hard work goes into putting together a production on this scale that will have over 100 talented actors and dancers of all different ages and ethnicities right here from Houston. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the preparation goes into making sure my dance partner Claire is comfortable because there's a lot of scenes where uh, we dance together and there's a duet as well as she has her solo, but when we dance together, it's basically, it's uh, in most male partners' jobs to make sure that your partner is secure and that she doesn't have to uh, worry about the technical things and just focus on performing and, and uh, just being generous to the audience. And this show is also being generous to his cast, giving this production true purpose and meaning, helping to change their lives. We use Houston's Urban Nutcracker um, as our annual scholarship fundraiser to give dance tuition scholarships and collegiate scholarships to dancers who are underserved and underrepresented. So that's that's really the primary purpose and goal of it. It's also to unify the city. That's right, now the show is produced by the Culture Arts Initiative and will hit the stage December 3rd and 4th. It's gonna be really exciting. For ticket information, I'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. What's really cool is that, like she said, it's a scholarship to go yeah. back to those dancers that don't really have the funds to take them on to a further education. And a big supporter of this production is Lauren Anderson. You know, we oh, love her. we love her ballerina. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So she's worked with some of the older production kids in here so they were able to learn from the best right. in order to put on this great show. And learn from someone that looks like them, yeah. which I think is really important. And you were uh, saying during that piece that the age range of the performers are yeah. as young as three, three years on up. old on up. And I cannot believe the talent that was in this production. I mean, when I was there at the rehearsals, I was amazed. I'm like, Fantastic. these little kids can move. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> what a great inside look, Joe. Thanks. Absolutely. Nice. All right, after the break, got paddle. I am headed outside to play ping pong. Wish me luck. Good luck. With a local table tennis whiz who at just 10 years old will be part of the 2021 World Table Tennis Championship. She's warming up and waiting there for you. Take is. it She's easy ready. on him. No, just kidding. I love it. Well, welcome back. This is so exciting. Houston is hosting the 2021 World Table Tennis Championships. This is the first time the renowned sporting event is hosted in the United States. We beat out Morocco in 2019 for the bid. It's a huge deal. Here to tell us and what we can expect to see in the world's best table tennis players in action right in our city. Janice Burke, CEO of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority, is joining me now on the couch. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is such an incredible event. For people who don't follow table tennis, explain to us why this was such a big bid to get. Very first time ever to be hosted in the United States. I think people were very nervous. In fact, it's hardly ever been outside of Asia or Europe. So um, for us to win it uh, on the 50th anniversary of ping pong diplomacy, what a great tie in and what a great, uh, great week we're having. We're gonna have about 25,000 people out and we're gonna have various days, red, white and blue day tomorrow. On Thursday, kids are free. So uh, everybody out there looking for something to do after they have their turkey dinner can come and 
uh, the kids are all free. This is really incredible. I mean, just the speed. This is not your backyard table tennis situation. And it, it's set up just like tennis is, right? So we have men's and women's singles. You have doubles. You have mixed doubles. What's interesting, explain to me how the, the pairing and the doubles works, because this is very different than any other sport. Yeah, so the mixed doubles, they can pick any partner they want from any country. In fact, North Korea and South Korea once paired up and won. Crazy. Um, which is just really, really neat when you see that, that power of sport uniting, right? And so this week, for the first time, China and USA are teaming up. We actually may have a chance to add a gold medal and for the first time, America winning a gold medal it, right here while the, it's in the U.S. This is really unbelievable and to witness that part of history is incredible too. Let's talk about Team USA because they're being labeled the dream team. And this is really the team for us to watch and obviously get behind during the cha championship. Yes, we'd love for people to come out and just cheer them on since it's never been here in the right. country to have their own you know fan base and and hopefully too we uh, you know somebody can win this great uh, Geist prize which is almost a hundred years old isn't it incredible it is and I'm looking at all the names that are etched in here I mean 1934 1927 I mean that the years go on and on and on but this is the coveted trophy it's one of them one of them yes and, and a lot of history with all the trophies too which I'm learning it's so great and it's so beautiful and this is all going on at the George R Brown Convention Center as you heard Janice say lots Lots of different activities going on uh, family day red white and blue day the times do vary tickets for early rounds just start at 10 bucks check out houstonlife.tv for all of the event information very easy to get to the George R Brown Convention Center it sounds like a history making event to be part of as well Janice thank you so much thank you for having me it's it's wonderful to be able to be here and to let our community know this is happening in our backyard I know it's so wonderful something else that's happening in our backyard here at KPRC. We're going to send things over to Derek, who is outside with a local young lady who is the third highest ranked player for her age in the U.S. Good luck, Dee. Okay, <laughs> I need it. This is Alina Wang, 10 years old. Keep them coming, keep them coming. I've been working on my form because I'm a little bit rusty. Am I hitting the ball too hard, Alina? Is that where I'm going wrong? Um, no. Okay, how did you get so fast at table tennis? Um, when the ball bounces, um, you just hit it back. It's that easy. When the ball bounces, you just hit it back. You got to tell me uh, when you started playing ping pong. I understand you were half the age you are now. You were five years old. Mm -hmm. And who inspired you to learn playing? Um, like when I watched my brother play, um, I wanted to play too. And so he taught you everything he knows, huh? Um, he didn't taught me. I like watched him play, so um, I just wanted to play. Well, and clearly uh, you you picked up pretty quickly. I saw some video of you earlier. I mean, you're really, really fast. You're really, really good. This weekend, of course, the, the Table Tennis World Championships are happening here in Houston. Is it your goal to one day compete? Mm, maybe. Maybe? Okay, I know at 10 years old, you, you would be the youngest competitor. You are going to be involved in the championships, though, even though you're not playing. Tell me what you'll be doing. Um, playing with other players. Okay, and will you be a ball girl this year? Yes. So what does that mean? What are your responsibilities as a ball girl? Um, like when the ball comes, I have to go run and go pick it up. So you have to go grab it. So you got to stay on your toes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we don't have a ball girl here today, but why don't I give you these two, and then I'm going to take a couple, and what do you say we play around for the last minute? Does that sound good? Do you want to serve first? Yeah. Okay, let's go for it. I'll do my best. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's go. My turn. How many volleys can you go back and forth when you and your brother are playing? Um, I don't play with my brother that much. You don't? Who do you play with? Um, with my coach. And tell me about your coach. Um, okay. he likes, um, like, play with me a lot. And how many hours a day do you have to practice in order to, to become a pro? Um, two or one hours. An hour or two a day. All right, well, listen, Alina Wang, it's nice to meet you. High five. Oh, is that allowed? Can we test those like that? High five. Good job. Thanks so much for coming by Houston Life. Have fun this weekend at the 2021 World Table Tennis Championships happening right here in Houston. In the meantime, let's send it back to Lauren Kelly. That was fun.
Hey guys, coming up next, we are talking to a couple of people who have run the turkey trot race on Thanksgiving Day. A lot of years and some new faces that are going to be joining us this year. And Sassy the Turkey. More info on that when Houston Life returns. Hey, the 2021 Baker Ripley Turkey Trot is happening this Thursday. It's a Thanksgiving Day tradition here in Houston, and there's so many wonderful memories that people have already made, and there's so many memories to be made on Thursday's big event, but there's one person specifically who has a lot of memories, and that is this man right here. This is Todd Breton. You have run the race all 28 years. Everyone, is that correct? Everyone. So, well, first of all, we love your hat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Why is it so important for you to continue this tradition? Your family is here with you today. I think it's fabulous. We like to have family traditions, but we also like to come out and support organizations that are local that help to give the community back. So we, that's why we keep coming back into the race. And we like the energy. I mean, it's a family environment. We uh, like seeing thousands of people on Thanksgiving morning, and it's just a very exciting time for us. And I think it's a lot more special this year because after the last year and a half that we've all had, we can finally be back in person to run. A lot of races have gone virtual, but it's so nice to be back in person. It is glad to be back in person and you know the first time I went did a race in person it was uh, pretty emotional just because when you're a runner you know not participating in a, a race in person is just pretty pretty awful so anyway I'm very excited to be in person and I know everybody else that's going to be joining us on Thursday morning will be the same way it's going to be such a blast you guys HoustonTurkeyTrot.org if you want to register right now we got all the information earlier thank you so much we appreciate you coming in uh, Frederick but I want to show off this year's shirt so Todd why don't you go ahead and hold it up everybody's going to get a, tr a, tr a turkey trot shirt from Baker Ripley for this year and when you finish you get the special finisher medal look at that. So thank you again and best of luck at the race this weekend. Thank uh, this Thanksgiving's not this weekend, it's on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We're looking forward to it. So yes. And don't forget, Sassy, the turkey mascot, is gonna be there in all of its glory chasing you. <laughs> she and he just don't know whether or not they're gonna make it to the Thanksgiving right. Day plate, right? <laughs> Have your turkey, but leave Sassy alone. Right, we will leave <laughs> alone. You guys, it's going to be a blast. We hope that you'll join us on Thursday for the 2021 Baker Ripley Turkey Trot. It's a 10K, a 5K, and a kids 1K. Again, HoustonTurkeyTrot.org for more information. Thank you guys, and best of luck again. Happy holidays. Happy Sending holidays. it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Lauren, thanks so much. Yeah, leave Sassy alone. Have fun out there. All right, after the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including one of the stars from the new film, Sing 2. Can't wait for this. And as we head to break, let's check in with Michelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight, including a look at the basic, biggest night in music. Hey, Michelle. Courtney and Derek, tune into ET tonight for your Grammy nomination breakdown, plus couples news where we caught Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson and is that a love bite on his neck? That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Tomorrow on Houston Life, get your motors running for this annual auto show happening this weekend. Autorama is returning to the GRB, and we are live with the coolest models hitting the road. Plus, the animated musical Sing 2 hits theaters next month. So exciting. Singer and actress Tori Kelly is chatting all about the follow-up to the wildly popular 2016 film, My Check Nieces are gonna lose their minds. Right, it looks so good, but I can't believe it was 2016. Five years ago. Out. So crazy. Such a good one. All right, also we are starting a brand new tradition each Tuesday. It's called T-Shirt Tuesday. Each week, we're going to be showcasing a special shirt with a themed saying. How about that, Courtney? I know, and in honor of Thanksgiving this week, we are we have these Let's Get Stuffed shirts, but we want your help to design our future T-Shirt Tuesday saying. And you know what? Our viewers are so creative. I know they're going to send some great ideas. In the coming weeks, we will be asking our KPRC2 insiders for their suggestions, and your shirt design or saying could be worn live on the show. That's right. Well, let's get a final look at your comments for our question of the day. Y'all have been so good today. We asked you, ruin Thanksgiving in four words. Yeah, and uh, Yahira writes in, ya no hay tamales. Oh, that's a problem. No <laughs> that tamales? That it right there. Lisa writes in, 
a tofu turkey. I mean, it's better than like tofurkin or turducken. I don't know. Right, Helen writes turducken in. Turducken is all meat. <laughs> you voted for who? Yes, breaking the no politics discussion oh, at the table. At the table, Jen writes in, we're out of beer. Oh. Thanksgiving's canceled. <laughs> okay, Christopher McLean, <laughs> the kitchen's on fire. Yep. Yeah, that might ruin Thanksgiving. That's going to be a downer. Lynn writes in, I missed the plane. Okay, yeah, well, at least, gonna you know, happen. it would be memorable for, for all of it. You know, uh, Janice was just here with the world championship for the table tennis, right? Yeah. She gave me one of the uh, ping pongs um, that this has the Chinese and the U.S. flag on it. Also, she told me 90 countries are being represented at this championship. <laughs> wow. It's really incredible. I hope you all get a chance. Check it out online. But uh, talk about a great event. If you're looking for something to do, go check it out. Well, also, while you're downtown, there are so many things that you can do. Discovery you, Green. Discovery Green. You could go have dinner at the Grove. Go ice skating at Discovery Green. So check it out downtown. Pick up a sandwich from Phoenicia Market. I don't know. Ride your bike down Austin Street. <laughs> Here are the details, by the way, once again for the 2021 World Table Tennis Championships happening starting today. And all the fun continues through next Monday at the GRB. Don't forget there's Family Day, Red, White, and Blue Day, all kinds of things for you to participate in. Tickets as low as 10 bucks. Go check it out. She said you won't recognize the GRB, the way they have the table set up and how far some of the competitors are from the table. And they take full swings like tennis players. Super cool. It's We're amazing. gonna have to start training for next year. Next year? Or like a couple years. Ten, probably. How long is it going to take to get good? It's going to be a minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I think our show's <laughs> over for now. Why don't we hand it over to Keith and Christine in Studio A? Okay. We know what to get Derek and Courtney for Christmas. I know. A little table tennis it. set. Yes. Ping pong table. There hey, we listen, go. Listen, mixed doubles right here. Mixed <laughs> doubles. Oh no, I am. Ve I'm not very agile or very quick. Yeah. Yeah. The hand and coordination is tough. I know. Yeah. No, I, I'm just letting them know. <laughs> hey, it could be fun. Or it could be tragic. Yeah. But that's <laughs> either way we're laughing. laughing. Either way we're in. <laughs> either way we're in too. Just Great to see you guys. Save the you video. Too. Save the video. Okay. All right, guys, have a good one.